When using the ear for tuning strings on a guitar or a piano, one can take advantage of the phenomenon called beats. These beats occur when two frequencies are very close to each other, and the number of beats per second is equal to the difference in frequencies. The closer the frequencies are to each other, the less beats one will hear. And what is being heard are the rise and fall of sound corresponding to when the vibrations add constructively, which is an increase in sound, or destructively, which is a decrease in sound. Let's consider two sine waves and their graphs. The first sine wave has frequency 444 hertz. This is in blue, and the second sine wave will have frequency 445 hertz. That will be in green. The motion of the green graph is essentially showing you how once every second the 445 hertz sine wave catches up to the 444 hertz sine wave. When the waves coincide, both graphs are positive and add to give a higher volume. However, one half second after this, the waves are at odds, meaning one is positive and the other is negative, and the volume decreases to zero. We can understand this by adding the two sine waves together to get a third graph. In this third graph in red, we have the sum of the two previous sine waves. The highest value is reached when the amplitudes add, and the lowest value is reached when the amplitudes subtract. You can do this with any sine waves. So let's look at another pair using the graphing calculator Desmos. First, I'll graph y equals sine of 2 pi times 2 x. And then on the same axes, I'll graph y equals sine of 2 pi times 2.1 x. The numbers 2 and 2.1 in parentheses are just values that I chose for frequencies. Any numbers close to each other will work but I'm using these small numbers to see the graphs easily. And now I'll add in the graph representing the sum of those two sine waves. Since the two individual waves have an amplitude of one, the sum has a highest point of y equal two, which is one plus one. Furthermore, the difference in the individual frequencies is 2.1 minus two, which is 0.1. This also means we should have 0.1 or one tenth of a beat every second. We can understand this more easily as just one beat every 10 seconds. If you look at the summation graph, you'll see that the highest point is reached at x equals zero, and then again at x equals 10. What we can notice is that even though the frequencies of the individual waves are different, which also means their periods are different, the sum gives rise to another periodic function. It repeats every beat. Furthermore, there is a harmonic motion that can be described by what we have noticed. If these two waves act individually on a particle from perpendicular directions, the point will move in the xy plane. Using our oscilloscope from before, we can make the x-coordinate take on the voltages from the 444 hertz sine wave and the y-coordinate take on the voltages from the 445 hertz sine wave. What we get is a graph that looks like a circle spinning in three dimensions. You can visualize this at home by taking a slice from an orange, putting it into a cylindrical glass, and then rotating the glass. Other interesting figures can be made when considering two frequencies from a musical scale, like fourths, fifths, and octaves. Here's what the note A and its perfect fourth D look like when graphed together. And now here's the A again with the perfect fifth E. And here again is the note A with the octave above it. These figures can also be created by a compound pendulum, like an emptying container of sand hanging on a string from a pivot point. Along with using frequency beats to help with tuning, they are also a form of amplitude modulation, which is discussed in another video. They can also be used as a detuning effect with instruments like a synthesizer, changing one oscillator's tuning while keeping another constant which we can hear in this example.